Coach Vanessa Taylor joining us now. It's a double overtime game, a tough loss against Bethune Cookman. Yeah, a very tough loss. It was a hard fought game uh, for the Lady Eagles, and we expected to come out on top. Just came up short, some free throws, some rebounds. Um, Got to be able to be a little bit more efficient, you know, in the end of the game, knowing what our second option is, and then being ready in those cases. They were definitely sending two people at Jessica, and, you know, we were kind of young on the floor, but they practice these things every day, so we know they'll get better with them from the experience they had today. Well, besides an 8-0 start for Bethune-Cookman, this is a tight game going back and forth, and then down the stretch, you guys uh, employed the full-court press, were able to get some turnovers and uh, push the game to overtime. Uh, tell us a bit about the defense for North Carolina Central today. Well, we're working very hard to establish our defensive identity and being able to apply pressure at times and create turnovers. So one of the things you want to do with that anytime you're on the defensive side of the floor. Uh, at times tonight, our young women did a very good job with that. We've just got to figure out when we're in our half-court set to make sure that our rebounding comes up a notch in key scenarios. We gave up too many offensive rebounds late in the game, second chance points for two Bethune Cookman, or sent them to the line for free throws as opposed to how we had been doing uh, during the regular game and just moving our feet and getting position. You mentioned rebounding. Uh, North Carolina Central able to out-rebound Bethune Cookman by a margin of 13. Uh, what was the big key for that for North Carolina Central? Key for that was just getting yourself, you know, in position and making plays. And as we went down the stretch, though, like I said, in the overtime and then again with um, the first and second overtime, you got to get the right rebounds. I think there were too many situations where we don't score, they go down and score, and we're unable to create a second opportunity for ourselves. Those are things that we'll continue to work on, so we'll get better at it. The Lady Eagles had some trouble from the foul line today. How much did that affect the team? Well, free throws at this point in the season always affects, you know, the ball game. And we talk about winning games right now. Uh, it starts with our defense, certainly getting ourselves to the line and converting, and then just making sure that we share the ball um, on the offensive end of the floor while applying pressure on defense. And so those are some constants for us. Uh, we were a little bit stagnant with that at key times in the game today. But like I said, every game for us is another opportunity uh, tonight. We have some young people on the floor. They got some valuable experience. We'll take that and move forward into FAMU. I also, uh, you had a couple players foul out, Kira Connolly and Raquel Davis down the stretch, and they left you with uh, Tisha Dixon in the jump circle for the second overtime period. Uh, uh, how much were you affected by losing those two players down the stretch? Well, it affects us, and we talked to certainly our upper class and about just knowing your value to your team, what needs to happen, when it needs to happen. But certainly you have to be available in order for those things to happen. But just as Jessica reiterated to you, every day in practice we talk to all 11 players saying everybody has to be ready. You never know what's going to happen, whether it be an injury or anything else. It's next man up for us. You know, so we are uh, learning how to make big plays in the heat of the moment. Well, a couple more questions here. Uh, going into the first and second overtime periods, what were you telling your team as you were getting ready for those extra five minutes of play? Everything begins with us with our defense. Make sure you're playing defense with your feet, with your communication, and then we're helping the helper and was always moving and act active. And then offensively, you know, we're looking for high-quality shots, whether it be something in transition or out of the half-court set. We want a high-quality shot. In reference to what our field goal percentage has been that particular night, let's get an interior touch, let's move the ball well, and then take a high-quality shot and then rebound, rebound, rebound. Florida A&M coming in on Monday, able to record a win in Tallahassee. What's it going to take to get another one on Monday? Well, this is a def different game. Certainly we were excited about that win, but that is so far from our minds right now. We must get ourselves ready for this particular moment. At home, conference game, we've got to be ready. Um, FAMU is a very quality opponent, a very good team. Both teams have had time to grow and adjust since our last meeting, and so we're just glad to be playing at home. We're excited about the challenge, and we look forward to the game. Coach, it's kind of weird to look at the league standings and see your girls at the bottom in terms of scoring when you got a got somebody like Jessica who can really fill it up. But is that just a matter of that efficiency that you're talking about and, and she perhaps needing a little bit more help scoring-wise? Well, you know, you look at the minutes tonight. Jessica played 50 minutes. She didn't come out of the game. You know, so that's what I mean when I say having that uh, second option within your offense because teams now know Jessica scores for us. And so the scout report says, hey, at times you're going to see a double. We have to grow where we're beginning to take advantage of that a little bit better as a unit, uh, regardless of who's on the floor for us. 
And as I asked Jessica, is this the point of the season where you start to worry about league standings and these losses catching up with you? No. We look at one game at a time. We prepare for each game. Every game is an opportunity. We look at what is right in front of us right now. We're preparing for that. Like in this particular moment, certainly we're disappointed that we lost to Bethune, but we don't have time to wallow in that. We've got to get ready for FAMU because we have another home game, and all of these games are important. 43 to 38, Bethune Cookman in front, under eight minutes remaining here in regulation. Here's Freeman down the right baseline. Now a jumper on the way, no good. Rebounded by Tisha Dixon under the basket. She gets it outside to Rachel Williams. Williams will step into it inside the perimeter. Rattles around and out. Tiffany Gary brings it out. Pump fakes and now she'll go up strong on the left side. Good. That's her first point in this contest. And that's a good job by Tiffany Gary. Tiffany Gary, uh, double overtime game out there, but a tough loss against Bethune Cookman. Yeah, it was a pretty tough loss, but um, the girls, we worked really hard to have two overtimes. So we left it out there, but, you know, it was a pretty tough loss with all the work we put out there. They had a good game out, out there for you today, 13 rebounds. What was it like going out there against Kaylin Williams the second time this season? Well, my mindset really was to do my role, which is get rebounds, communicate, and play some defense. So I know that my team needs me to get rebounds, and that's what I'm going to do. Um, the way I think, I don't worry about who's on the other team, so, so it won't get to me. So that was just my mindset. As long as I do my role for my team, then I'm good, and they're good. Uh, Jessica Freeman mentioned it in her interview. You guys were able to uh, put out that full court press and able to force some turnovers going down the stretch and going in overtime. What was it like out on the floor during that? It was like a rush because we know when we put pressure, then they turn the ball over. Because when we go after someone, they get scared. And it's like we sense that. So with our press, we're like, we work on that in our, in our practice really, really hard because we know that when we go after someone, they're just going to turn it over because we know we're really good at that. Double overtime, 50 minutes of play, the longest game for North Carolina Central uh, this season. Uh, what was it like out there on the floor when you guys were going into the overtime periods from your perspective? Our mindset was just to get at them because coming from their house when we should have won on their road, we was just like, we're going to give it to them like what we should have the first time. So in our mindset, we was like, we're going to go after them. If it takes two overtimes, then good, because we want to let them know they're not going away with this win. So that was how we were thinking going into two overtimes. Well, you got Florida A&M coming in on Monday, able to record a win against them in Tallahassee. What's it going to take on Monday to get another win? That same thing we had on the road, fam, because you know when we was on the road, fam, we was down, but we still fought. So we just got to fight with the same intensity that we had today there and just go at them because right now, just because we lost, they're going to come in because they got revenge on us for beating them. But we're just going to come in. We just got to play harder, and they got to pay for basically what Bethune just did today. Tiff, at this point in the season, and particularly as a senior, do you start to worry about the losses piling up? I'm not, it comes, but that's something I can't focus on right now because right, if I focus on that, as a team focus on that, then that's just going to bring us down. So right now, I just got to look ahead, go into the next game, and we just all got to know we got to get the next win that's in front of us. Tiffany Gary, thank you very much. Thank you. Four-point spread, 51 to 47. Here's Connolly on the right side. She drops it off to Freeman. Freeman for three. Off the glass. Cash money open. The vault. The bank is open. 51-50. North Carolina Central trailing by one with 80 seconds remaining here. Morgan Jones up ahead to Alexis Hines. Coming down the right side of the floor. Hines now drops it off to Freeman. Freeman now bottled up and now she'll dribble out to the right side. Now she'll step up to the perimeter and she'll no go up for three. Cash! Jessica Freeman and she'll knock the game up at 53. 21 points for Jessica Freeman. Five for eight from beyond the arc. 55-54. Here's Freeman now with the ball top of the perimeter. And Morgan Jones thought about the three, decided against it. Now moves all to Hines and they'll reverse the rotation. Now it's Freeman on the left wing. Freeman now just inside the perimeter. Money. 23 for Jessica Freeman. And Morgan Jones will inbound it. It goes to Freeman, five on the shot clock. She'll pull up from long range. No good off the heel of the iron. Pulled down by Alexis Hines. And Hines bounce pass over to Freeman. Freeman now pulled up from just the side. Thing. Big jumper. Big basket there by Jessica Freeman. Now we got to get a stop down three with 117 left. Jessica Freeman, it took double overtime, but a, a tough game out there against Bethune-Cookman. Yeah, it was. Uh, I wish we could have came away with the win. Um, it's a hard loss for us, but it's a learning process. We just got to learn to do the little things to win. And... Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. 
Well, 25 points for you today, 5 for 13 from beyond the arc. Uh, how are you feeling out there shooting the ball? I mean, I was confident. I knew my team needed me. But, again, it wasn't enough to get the win. It was enough to get us in overtime, but that's that's not going to show up on our record. So, um, still, I just got to bring in the next game when we play FAMU on Monday. A couple of good guards across the floor for Bethune-Cookman. Uh, what was it like on the floor defending them? Um, we just had to make sure we keep our hands off. Uh, we couldn't get in with the ref, so we just had to play better defense and keep them in the alley like Coach Taylor taught us to do. So we just had to keep our hands off and do better with moving our feet. Well, you guys uh, went down the stretch and were able to tie it up and head into overtime and then again into double overtime. Uh, what were you guys feeling out there on the floor and what was said in the huddle when you guys were going into the overtime periods? The only thing we kept saying is we're not going to lose this game. We're not going to lose this game. We're coming out with this win. We got to do what we got to do. We were just encouraging each other, and that was mostly it. Well, you got Florida A&M coming in on Monday, and we're able to record a win against them in Tallahassee. Uh, what's it going to take to get another one t on Monday? We just got to bring our energy like we did this um, uh, game. We got to start off better, and we got to play NCCU basketball for 40-plus minutes. Jessica, is it, is it too simple for me to say, had you had Kira and, and Rocky out there at the end, that, that might have took you over the hump? Um, they are key players, but at the same time, we have, we're faced with adversity. We have to learn how to adjust to that if they are out. So uh, we can't use that as an excuse because you just never know what's going to happen. Um, how about that? The press y'all guys put on at the end of the game, do you think that was more an uh, effort or push y'all towards more of the two other times y'all went to? Um, the press, uh, we're very aggressive in our press. Um, it was We were able to slow them down uh, when it came to the end, get time off the clock. So uh, that pressure sounds like we got, we got a couple of steals off that. So our press, um, it really did help us.